my opinion, we could mm -hmm. change the subject and go a totally different way, but mm -hmm. uh, how to get the dogs to slow down to eating. Mm -hmm. And it helps the resource guarding a lot, like me was, and I think all of our dogs, we tell them to, when they're, they're eating, we'll tell them get a bite, they'll take a bite, we'll tell them play, so they get mm -hmm. on their bed and they have to wait. And, then we could pick their bowl up, set their bowl back down. When or, it still has food in yeah. it. Yeah. It's when they're away from it a foot or two, you know, and that's what gets people bit a lot yeah. is resource guarding, yeah. is people try to take something from a dog. And you should be able to. You know, you should be able to walk up and take a ball or a stick out of his mouth. But we're not recommending you to. <coughs> no. Most but if you teach dogs, your dog to you drop shouldn't. something and move away from it, before right. you pick it up. Right. You can stop a lot of the resource guarding, but once you pick it up, you can't let them jump at it and leap at it, you know, and yeah. try to steal it back from you because uh, that's all they're doing. They're just, it's theirs, yeah. and they own it. And uh, some of them don't want to bring it back to you. Right. If you're playing that, because then they're, they're keeping their property away from you because they don't want you to take their property. Right. And if you try to take their property, like I said, that's what people get bit. You right. try to take the ball out of their mouth, the frisbee out of their mouth, the stick out of their mouth. So uh, they can, what all, I mean, they resource guard everything. Yeah, so what is resource guarding? It's owning something that yeah. they didn't buy. Yeah. You know, yeah. a bed, a yeah. couch, uh, yeah. a person. Food, toys, yeah. the truck, yeah. inside or the back, yeah. or the outside. Yeah. They own, they resource guard their property. Other dogs. Yeah, other dogs, yeah. kids, you know. Yeah. I mean, anything they can be around, they can they can A napkin. Own it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they can own that. And, yeah. Uh, but for me, I think there's so many times it starts with the dog food. As a puppy. For sure. Like you said a while ago, yeah. and them trying to get in there and get all the food first. Or a bone. Yeah. 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 And so uh, people give them these uh, bones to chew on, and then they can't take it a lot of times. Yeah. You know. Well, and I think people think it's cute when they uh, growl and snarl. Like you have an eight, nine, ten week old puppy, and it has an item, and it's like, when you come near it and people are like, oh, look, it, it's his sandwich. And that puppy is like, yeah, it's my sandwich. <laughs> and then uh, they take the sandwich and they'll like run away. Yes. And then, oh, and look, he's it. running away with it. I was proud of you dog's put like, bread you... sandwich back. I thought you <laughs> might just eat it like, you had it there. <laughs> you, you, uh, you're getting near my item yes. and now I'm going to take my item. And nope. sometimes they'll go hide it. Yes. Yeah. And so, and that's the thing that, like I said, I think a lot of times people think it's fun. Uh, when it's, it's a young puppy, yes. yeah, yeah. I think it starts out as a harmless. game. Yeah, yeah, it starts yeah. out as a game. Yeah. Like I said, well, ago, you're wanting to play fetch and a dog mm -hmm. takes, when you throw the ball or the frisbee or the sock or whatever you throw, a toy, yeah. they get it and they're like playing keep away. Yeah. And even with the puppy then, it's fun. You know, normally they're not just going to bite you, but then once you grab it and the tug starts, then they start re-grabbing, and if you ain't careful, then it just escalates from right. there rather than them dropping yeah. it. And, and I don't, I think that uh, the resource guarding is it's it goes back to uh, the subject that we were on yesterday: separation anxiety, mm -hmm. because they will own you. You know, right, right. And then, yeah, all of these these different topics. Yes. Are usually, you have some major behavioral problems yes. with the dog that you can prevent in puppyhood. Yes. You can prevent so many problems. You can shape them to not have these behaviors early. You can, and it just takes a lot of work. And a lot of times, people don't do the work because they don't want the dog not to love them. Well, and there's so much information out there. I think if you were to like uh, hop on Google and Google resource guarding with yeah, dogs, I think that it would be stuff. like, it's the dog's item. Don't yeah. take it away. The dog is telling you not to take it away. Brett and I were watching something last night that was saying that you have to ask a dog's consent. So if, if a dog steals my sandwich, I have to ask my consent to get it back. 
But you know, you should share your sandwich with the doctor. I know. You're yeah, I selfish. watched that one guy said that human humans resource selfish. guard our food. Yes. Because we don't give our dogs yes. any of it. You're resource guarding. Crazy. Yeah. Anyways, that that's going to send me into a frenzy. So. Uh, <laughs> Her blood Type, pressure just went up. Types of resource guarding. I, <clears throat> I want to touch on this again, even though we kind of have already done it. There's so many different ways that uh, resource guarding can happen. Happens, and I'll admit that I've done a really good job with my. I had done a really good job with my dogs of that. If I have Scout, Tilly, Rebel, and Rue, and if Rue has a frisbee and Scout goes to take that frisbee from Rue, Scout gets corrected. If Rue growls at Scout. For coming near her with the frisbee, Rue gets corrected. Right. All four of my dogs have a pretty good program where if Rue has a frisbee, Rue doesn't growl over some at someone coming near her, and Scout doesn't take the frisbee. And if anybody comes to take a toy from Scout, he just drops it and gets out of it. He's really good at it. Tilly and Rebel wouldn't take the toy from one another, but one little dog argument I had, Tilly had the toy, dropped the toy. No, backwards. Rebel had the toy. Rebel dropped the toy. Tilly grabbed it. <laughs> and Rebel said, that's still mine, and bit Tilly. And so when the item is in their mouth, they can resource guard. When the item is near them, they can they resource guard. They can't resource guard as much as nobody could steal it. Huh? For you, your dog, if Scout has it. Mm -hmm. He can't fight over someone taking it. R right. You train right. your dogs that no one can take it. Right. Right. But then I had to add this extra layer of when you spit it out, you're done with it. Yes. You go away. Yes. Yeah. And so uh, the, they can have it in their mouth. And that, that's like the obvious one. Your dog has a bone and it growls at you. It's resource guarding. Yes, right. That, that one's... Pr if you can't tell that your dog is resource guarding when it has food in its mouth and it growls at you, you should come get some help. Yeah. But uh, if it, if the dog doesn't have it in its mouth, and let's say it's a bowl of food, and your dog has a bowl of food and you come near the dog and the dog is like this, it's resource guarding. Yeah. And if the dog freezes and its body language is like so stiff and it's looking at you and watching you, it's resource guarding. And sometimes you're, you're half an inch away from a bite. Right. Where that dog just, that day it's like, no, this food tastes really good. It's cold this morning. I want my breakfast. And it nips you. And, and, go ahead. and I don't think the answer is when your dog shows signs like this or growls or snarls its lip a little bit uh, or takes the food and runs away that you should give that dog more space and make sure everyone always leaves the dog alone because the dog resource well, guards. I think you help. should have safe yeah. scenarios where you feed your dog in a crate and you don't, you know, don't go take the food. Don't, don't address it without professional help, right. but you shouldn't isolate that dog and say, this dog resource guards. So everybody leave him alone when he eats, right. you know, that, that's sure. not the sole answer. It's yeah, just avoiding it, that situation for the people who stuck on the scenario. Oh, they're playing. That's okay. If that's what you want to, you know, but for us, it's something that should be addressed. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and if it's a game you play with your dog and you've done it for 20 years, we're not talking to you. Yeah, true. You know, we're talking to the other people. Um, and then there are, it goes beyond there's food and the dog, and the dog is standing near the food and doesn't want other dogs. <clears throat> Sometimes dogs will only resource guard against another dog, but they'll right. let humans take it. Sometimes vice versa. The, the dog can eat my food, but the human can't touch yeah. it. But then it goes beyond that. You could have a, You could have a drumstick in your hand, and the dog... Let's say you have two dogs and you're holding a drumstick and the resource guarding dog really wants that drumstick. It might attack another dog yes, because the food is present. Yes. Yeah. And then uh, they might resource guard kids when you have people come over. Yes. They might not want other little kids running around with their little kids. They like your kids, but they don't want other little kids around. And then all, all of that goes back to resource guarding. And, the, and sometimes we've had a dog that when you're carrying the trash bag out, they, they bite you. Yeah. They bite you for having 
something they want yes. in your hand. So there's so many different ways. It's not just if if your dog doesn't growl at you when you take its food, it doesn't necessarily mean your dog never resource guards right. because sometimes they'll resource guard a stick in the woods or a ball at the dog park. And we they, see that a but lot. But you can take their food away. We see that a lot yeah. with our set dogs free because we'll have 10 and 20 dogs there and they're always grabbing a horse turd or a stick or, yeah. you know, yeah. whatever they can find. But I think, knock on wood, I don't think we've ever had a fight over it. No, but every, every once in a while when someone new joins our pack for Set Your we Dog Free. We've got to be really careful and make they, sure they understand. The, the even uh, Gabe the other day was like, our stick's a no-go. And why why would they be, right? You have a bunch of dogs. Why not play sticks with them? If I go out to play fetch or throw a toy or a stick... I'm in training mode yeah. because I have a few. We have a few very high-powered dogs yes. that would get in a lot of trouble, and so we set them up to train on them, not just willy-nilly throwing toys and sticks and balls without making sure that the board and train dogs that are new don't know the program. Right. Because if they get it in their mouth and then you can you don't you have a good drop it, drop it yeah. on them, you could have problems. Yeah. And then even if they drop it, they might hang out right by that stick and become obsessed sure with that gets stick it. and not want anybody in that area. I got a somewhere we have a video, I think maybe pictures from years back. I had like I think a Rottweiler and a pet bull and a lab and a border I don't know, there's like five dogs had this one tree limb and they were all pulling in different ways playing. Oh yeah. And I let them do it just because a group of people there. I wanted to show them that whenever I said we were done, they were, we yeah. were done. Yeah. And they was all pulling and playing. And you can do this. We did and let people them. want to yeah. do it, yeah. you know. Yep. But whenever I say drop it, they all spit it out and yep. they leave. Yep. They go on their merry way and leave. And if home. anybody got <clears throat> uh, grumpy, we would have addressed that behavior. Yes, they would have just got in yeah. trouble over it, ever how. I mean, yeah. uh, but... So don't think that we're saying your dogs can't do a lot of fun stuff because they can. They just can't be a turd about it. Right. Yeah. They yeah. got to be respectful yeah. of all people and dogs. And with the resource guarding stuff, for me, a, a trucks is huge. Uh, cars. You know, oh, yeah. you have dogs in the cars. Uh, and they don't and want the gas guy pumping your gas. Yeah. Or they don't want nobody <laughs> looking in their car or walking by their car yeah. and. Uh, for me, it's just not a good thing, you know. Uh, we had a dog growl the other day at the coffee shop or something. And he was in a crate, rot water in the back of the car. And Growling in the it. car for no reason. At the gas pump? Mm -hmm. oh, sorry, if you go on and then I'll add well, my two I don't, cents. Well, I don't want my dog growling at the guy pumping the gas. I don't want my dog growling at the guy that's the lady who's handing you coffee at the window. Uh, I don't want my dog growling at dogs that walk by your car. If they touch your car and start bothering your car, mm -hmm. it's kind of a different thing. And even pumping gas, you know, you can be, for me, once your dog has been in your car a couple of times, when somebody walks up and pumps gas, they should quit growling at them. Right, you know? right, right. Uh, We're not expecting them to never make a mistake. It's just you have to address the mistake. Yeah, they got to learn. And I'm not going to be getting on them and screaming at them and stuff for it. I'm just going to be like, no. And let them know that they can't growl that guy pumping gas. And the people's the one who uh, sometimes has trouble with it. They're like, well, they're touching my car. They are. But in Oregon, well, they did pump the gas. Now sometimes it's like a, getting a lottery ticket uh, to get pump gas, I think. But I feel that your dog, and I know your dog, will know the difference between the guy who's trying to pump the gas and the guy who's trying to break in the back of your car. Can I ask you a question about that? <clears throat> yeah. This is like deep subject and we won't spend too much time on it. But don't you think that if you are a really good leader for your dog and you've spent enough time training on it and you have like a quality relationship with the dog, that if someone approaches your car and you're comfortable, your dog can sense that. But if someone approaches your dog and you're uncomfortable, that your dog will pick up on some of your cues? I, well, yes, like, if 100%. I pull up to the gas station and the guy's like, hey, good morning. And I'm like, good morning. And I hand him my credit card. I hand it out the window. My dog should leave that alone. Yes. But if someone if is approaching my car, car. Right. Or if, or if uh, I don't remember what happened, but there was one time when I had some sketchy stuff at a sketchy gas station and Scout was in the car. And I, 
I was very uncomfortable myself. I think you and were I didn't here. know what to do because it was like real. No, that was another time. Oh. But I I didn't know what to do because it's like I really don't want my dog growling at people. But in this case, I'm not uncomfortable with them knowing I have a growling dog sure. in the car. But I feel like he could read the difference of those people for sure. They but do. also yeah. me because I if they were people that made him uncomfortable, but I was comfortable, I could be like quit and yes. he would man down. You know. But you know this same thing is and now I'm I gotta talk to Heather more in depth about it. But right. yesterday Heather came in and she comes to work right before daylight now. Another yeah, week yeah, to it's dark. Yeah. And she started to pull in but there was a, a septic truck out here. Yeah, and the there's pie. never anybody no, here. And he in was the parked morning. at the gate and the guy walked at her car and he was probably yeah. kinda of hurry because he wanted to get his job done. Big at tall guy yeah. with big gear on. And, yeah, and yeah. uh Coda lost a little bit. Yeah, he did. In yeah. that situation, that's fine. Yeah, I don't mind. Yeah, and but as long know, as she can control him yes. from reaching out the window and yes. biting him. Yes. Yeah, and so for me, situations like that, you know, he wasn't resource guarding her car; he was protecting her. Correct. And yeah. like you said, as long as anybody else can approach the yeah. car, yeah. no as problem. As long as he stays in his car yeah. and behaves himself, that's fine. Yeah. And you want dogs like that, especially nowadays, you know. Uh, I mean, me, ideally, I I don't know, if I was like you, I would, well, I don't want to tell you this because you'll probably do it, but <laughs> I would teach my dog to growl on command. Oh, yeah. You know, show his teeth on command. Yeah. And then when I'm yeah. out somewhere, and we run into it, you know, because we go to parks and the river and stuff, and there's sometimes people living in cars and stuff, yeah. and, you know, I don't want my dog to growl at someone because they got a hood on yeah. protecting me. Yeah. You know what I mean? But like you said, a lot of these dogs, once they're trained pretty well, they read these people different. And it's not resource guarding me. Right, right. It's actually right, protecting right. me and I didn't spend $40,000. Yeah. It's a reason I've always appreciated. It's not the only reason I want a dog. I have a lot of reasons to want a dog. But I've always appreciated having a dog when I'm driving somewhere I don't want to be driving yeah. or walking somewhere I don't want to be walking. For sure. Usually if I have a dog, I get left alone. But see, my dogs would lick somebody to death. Right. Except Bear... He bites on he, the man. Yeah, if you told him to bite somebody, he would. He would probably yeah. bite someone. He would, okay. he would lick them when he got done. So the only thing I want to add to that, and then we'll go back to the resource guarding thing, is we're talking about when dogs might be be growling when someone's in the car or growling, growling when someone's coming near you, but it's not resource guarding. If I was going to teach a dog to growl, I would not want to teach a dog like Scout to do that, would I? Mm, I don't know. I, you know, the thing is, now I talk to you, I'm not talking to the same person I was a year ago. Three years in ago. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's Even true. a year ago. Okay. I mean, you've advanced so far, you know. Yeah. But I think that if you do it, you got to make it fun for you. Okay, okay. You can't make it like you're going to eat somebody. Don't okay. you forget it, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. It's just like that makes sense. Uh, Gabe does with his dog. Right. Right. He has fun doing it. Yeah, he's know. like whisper, yeah. speak, yell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, okay. but when it comes to the vehicle, you know, you see, I see a lot of it with the cowboy world because I rodeoed a little bit, well, roped a little bit, I guess, whatever. <clears throat> but a lot of those people, they have their dogs and they're on the road, you know, and their dogs hang out with them at rodeos around their rigs. And uh, you better not go grab one of their little kids. Oh, yeah, I believe Or that. you yeah. probably shouldn't yeah. walk in their travel truck or their uh, living quarters or try right. to get in their truck and get their change out of right. the dash. Right. You know? and But they, those they people can invite anybody in. They can. And the dog isn't going to growl right. at them and bite them. That's, that's the difference. Yes, and yeah. that's what people don't understand about dogs and uh, resource guarding and uh, owning people, you know, and, uh, protecting people and owning dog food, you know? I mean... I think, like you, you could feed all nine of your dogs or three of your dogs in one spot, right? And they don't eat one another. Yeah, correct. But, but I you, trained on them. But you manage it. Mm -hmm. You don't just give them all their food and go home. Or... Sometimes now I'll give them their food and walk away. But I. But I you're put a right lot... there where you can hear. I'm in the up. same building. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of people do that, you know. I mean, but some people who do that free feed. I they can't. I can't buckets. believe what, Brett. Feeds his dog on the ground, and my cat comes over and is like, what you got? 
<laughs> and I'm like, I can't believe she hasn't killed my cat. But he's like, I just make her be nice. She likes cats. <laughs> she does like cats. <laughs> <clears throat> but it is when it comes to resource guarding things, people sometimes start it as a puppy. It starts as a puppy if people don't see it. And they let it go, 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 go. And then one day they got a two-year-old dog. Dog fighting dogs that get around their food or their stick or their ball or toy or their human, you know, or their car or their house or their yard. I mean, it just, there's no limit to what they can resource guard. Right, yeah. So I also think sometimes, I don't think this is as common, maybe. I don't think this is as common as... Uh, People do things to accidentally tease a puppy or a dog. Well, they do. They shake stuff at them. them and, get yeah. They take frantic. their bowl and they give it back and yeah. they just play games yeah. with them. Yeah. That's kind of well, like and, and even the, the sit and stay until you give them the food. Yeah. There's so much anticipation and then frantically gorge on the, the food bowl. Yeah, for me, I feel in my world. The dog shouldn't be trying to eat the food when you set the bowl down. Right. But in my world, if you tell your dog, okay, you can eat, you should be able to say place, and he should move his butt back over there and sit down. Or call the dog with you and leave the room yeah, and then come off. back. Yeah. Or and you, you don't should be able to reach tease down. Them. You should be able to reach down and pick up his dog food and put it on yeah. the top of his crate, crate kennel, whatever. Right. And like you said, leave and go outside and do something and then come back in and let me eat. Yeah. yeah. There's so many things you should be able to do. <clears throat> when they're eating to to stop it without yeah. getting bit or someone else yeah. getting bit. We get dogs here that you walk by their kennel and they're like, ah! And With the uh, empty food there's bowl. Shit, there's an empty food yeah. bowl in there, but they still don't yeah. want to buy around that food bowl because they're yeah. waiting for their food to come back. Yeah. So, you got anything else you want to add to it? Uh, I don't. I was checking uh, to see if we had any comments. I think that whenever you come, whenever a person comes to resource, a dog is resource guarding anything. Sometimes it don't matter how light it is or how bad it is. You should get some professional help. Yeah, yes. And well, try to stop it. Uh, you should, in my thinking, you should do your homework on does this person train this kind of behavior? You know, not or does this down. person teach the human to leave the dog alone when it tells you to you leave its food? You don't want to train with someone who tells you that if the dog takes your peanut butter and jelly sandwich, let them have it. Yeah, you probably should find a different trainer. And for me, whenever I go to that, you know, and it, like, it could be any age. I mean, you could get a puppy that's had to fight for his food, you know, for the first two, three weeks of his life when he's ate hard food, you know, or when he's on his mommy uh, that had to fight for his food. And yeah. one day, whenever yeah. he goes to your house, yeah. he's like, there ain't no more of this shit. I'm going to take everything over, right. you know, and they're right. going to be the boss and they're going to yeah. resource guard everything. And But if you, for me, you know, if you do that, you should get help from somebody who trains with that kind of behavior. And uh, it's the same thing with... There's hope for you if it's an older dog and you should really get help if it's a puppy because you can prevent yeah. it. And any of the things can be trained as long as a person can be willing to change a little bit. Yeah. If you have a dog that's really resource guarding bad and you've had it for two weeks or five years, you know, uh, you have to change a little bit of yourself to be able to fix that. You can't just go, I don't think, you can just go hire a trainer to fix it. Right. And then send your dog back home and then this life is great again. You need to learn a little bit about Correcting your dog in those situations so it doesn't keep escalating. Anything else? Nope. Look, you need a nap? I do. Hey, Bianca just got up. Start resource guarding the bed. <laughs> Brett, look out. <laughs> so uh, I think that that's the thing is that dogs can resource guard anything <clears throat> or anyone. Your kids or the adults, you know. Yeah. Uh, the couch, the bed, whatever it is, they just try to own stuff and... So if you get in those situations, remember, try to get some professional help from someone who trains with that kind of dog. Uh, it's like me. You know, I had somebody a while back wanted me to help them with a show dog. And I'm like, I'm really not in the show dog training. I can give you all the training that will help you in show dog world. But mm -hmm. I don't know how to make them walk perfect with their little chains on their head and their head sticking up in the air, you know. 
Uh, I could do it if I wanted to learn how, but it's not my expertise. It's right. not my uh, passion. So right. there's a lot of people out there that do that. So, But when you come back to Resource Garden, always remember, don't just go in there and try to take a bone or a stick or a ball from a dog who doesn't want to share right, it Right, don't you. get hurt. Yeah, because yeah, you can. So. All right, Brett, we're going to wrap it up, man. Okay. So thanks, everybody. Hope you enjoyed it. And we'll be back, I don't know, tomorrow Maybe or Maybe not Monday. tomorrow. Probably Monday. Maybe Monday, yeah. Thanks a lot. <laughs>